And I'm going to move past this bag. Um, as, as I've talked about this, I've gone out and certainly talked to a number of, of our clients about it and talked in the, in the vertical, in the packaging vertical about this. And one of the first questions is, well, that's great conceptually, but how does this really work? Is anybody really doing this? And so I don't think you can read the individual labels on this graphic, but each set of two bars represents a month's work. And the left bar, uh, the green and the orange, represent a packaging skew. And then the right bar represents coupons. So in this particular customer, the, the uh, height of the axis there is a thousand. So if you look in the middle of the bar, you can see that we're running about um, 500 packages per month and somewhere between six, seven, eight hundred coupons per month through this process over the course of a year. So this, this particular customer has been doing this. Uh, I think they've moved about 3,500 SKUs and about the same number of coupons in a calendar year. And they're, they're automating 23 of about 60 different data elements. So again, as we analyze what was right, we don't want to we don't want to do everything all at once. We don't want to jump off a cliff here. We want to say what's right, what makes sense, what does brand want to do, and then there's an IT component here because if I'm drawing data straight out of a system of record at a customer, straight out of a, an SAP or an Agile a, a PLM tool or a tools like uh, our Blue tool that manages a lot of this data, um, IT often needs to be involved and they're going to want to know well, who's using this data, where is it going, why is it going there, how do we know that it stays accurate, and certainly there has to be a lot of dialogue there. So, so I've said a mouthful there. One of the things that I said is IT working hand in hand with marketing. And uh, you know, we've got some customers where that works great, but we have a lot of customers where culturally IT is very different from marketing. So one of the things we want to work through is change management, having a change agent who really believes in this process and the power that it can bring to the brand on the creative side. But typically, we think about who would be an IT partner as well in this process and who would be willing to be a change agent on the IT side so that the two can work hand in hand. So a couple more slides here, and then I think we can move to the QA section. Um, one, of the, one of the important components to making this happen in the industry is a standard. So if, um, if Shop wrote its own XML and another group wrote their, their own XML, uh, we would really create a little bit of chaos. We might get some benefit out of the automation, but we wouldn't get as much as if we created an XML standard. So this little snip of XML I showed you before is a type of XML, a very special type called IPC XML, or Intelligent Packaging Consortium XML. And, and this, this consortium uh, currently consists of Procter & Gamble, General Mills, Coca-Cola, a shock, Adobe is on it, and there's a company called ESCO that some of you may be familiar with that really sits on the back end production side and also helps with 3D visualization, some other areas that are packaging specific. So this group came together for the first time about a year and a half ago with a common problem and said, let's not just create a standard for ourselves, but let's publish the standard, put it out in the industry, and let's see if we can get a lot of companies leveraging this notion of, of getting away from the document-centric model into the data-centric model, getting into moving data through the supply chain in a controlled way, and let's move data in a way that can, we can automate uh, production, automate some aspects of QC, again, without damaging the creative uh, aspects of, of marketing and branding on packages. So to sum up some of the benefits as we segue to Q&A, um, one of the words I think um, seems to resonate the, the most with a lot of our customers is, is brand agility. How can the brand be more flexible? Again, worrying about moving large numbers of SKUs in a different direction. Let's say that I'm going to do a co-promotion with a new movie that's coming out. Or let's say that um, we've decided at in the club market, uh, the warehouse market, Sam's or BJ's or Costco, that I'm going to uh, do a, uh, a co-promotion and we're going to support the Leukemia Society for the first half of the year. Well, doing things like that take agility. The amount of time between the decision to do that and the time that you can get those products to market is often directly related to the complexity of change and manufacturing and manipulating all of this data. 
And so, so we want to use this to bring agility, flexibility. How can I respond to a competitor that, that, that I was I'm not aware of but just brought out a, a new promotion? And I want to react to that or change in uh, a government regulation that uh, deals with the way I present my ingredients or my nutrition facts. Uh, so, so that kind of bleeds into the second one. What's the speed of response to change? What's the speed of response if a giant retailer says they want to co-brand one of my key products? Um, how can I use this to, to boost accuracy and reliability? Well, if I'm not worried about those pickups, picking up data from older SKUs that, that probably is right but might not be right, how can I get data from a data source that I know is right and my organization and the supply chain have, have agreed that this is the way we're going to get the data and we believe in this data. We can also have a lot of reusability. So as I mentioned, data that's common across multiple SKUs, let's imagine uh, in, in, in a maybe electronics market, or let's take battery as an example, a do not swallow warning. Basically a, a child warning for swallowing, do not insert in mouth, etc. So there's a piece of legal copy that's going to be seen on hundreds or even thousands of SKUs that's essentially the same for that size battery. And now if I get it right and put it in that database, I can show that copy, get legal to sign off on it, and, and essentially reuse it quite heavily. That doesn't mean that legal will, will be completely out of the process, but it means that they won't be looking at the same copy over and over each time I release the SKU. Now let's also think about security of the, of the copy process. As we know, the world has changed not just since 911, but in general there's more government scrutiny on copy and what's in the package, how are we communicating that copy to the consumer. And we want to know and even be able to audit who touched that copy at what point in the process for what purpose. Basically a chain of ownership, if you will, for copy. And again, as I mentioned, in today's market, there is some emailing of Word files, there's some cutting and pasting going on uh, by either the design operator or some of your production artwork or even, even a late change sometimes in the pre-press uh, workflow. And when you cut and paste copy, you're really losing that chain of ownership. Whereas if I've got the copy in a database and I automate that copy onto the SKU, I've got an auditable trail and chain of ownership throughout the security process, throughout the copy process with some notion of security around it. The last point in here is about metrics and continual improvement. So once I have this database and I know who's changing the copy and for what purpose, I can also essentially audit that and say, well, what's the most common change of copy and which, which copy element is changed the most? And for what reason? Which department is doing it? And why is it occurring? Now, we may do some research and find out, yeah, that is the most common, and it's right. It happened for this reason. It's part of the business process. It's going to continue to happen. We know it. We understand it. It's all right. We also might find, you know, this is unnecessary. This same copy got changed six times in the last seven months, and it's kind of getting whipsawed maybe between legal and marketing. We need to figure out why and, and see if we can formulate a relationship where we get rid of that. 